Hello, how are you? On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I am pleased to be once again your moderator today. A few years ago, BWF developed a fast track course, which combines the content from the Coach Level 1 and Level 2 courses. This course is specially designed to support international elite badminton players who want to be successful coaches. Fast track courses are organized together with the BWF Continental Confederations. Last year, Badminton Pan American Confederation together with the BWF organized the first fast track course for our continent. This course was delivered in English by the renowned expert coach Martin van der Malen from the Netherlands, who was very demanding while teaching the contents in a theoretical and practical way, which ended with a corresponding evaluation. At the end, from all the candidates who took the course, Most of them were certified as coach level two. We wish them a successful future in this new stage of their lives as coaches. After these few words, I am pleased to introduce you to coaches Fabiana da Silva from Brazil and Lino Munoz from Mexico, who are going to talk today about their experience in the fast track course. But before leaving you with our guests, please let me read a short summary of each one of their careers. In the case of Fabiana, she was an Olympic athlete in Tokyo 2020. She was a bronze medalist in the Pan American Games Lima 2019. She's at BWF Coach Level 2, and she has a degree in physical education. On the other hand, we have Lino, who was the first male athlete to participate in both the Olympic Games Rio 2016 and Tokyo 2020. In doubles, he was a medalist in the Pan American Games Lima 2019, Central American champion in the team's event in 2018, BWF coach level two, and he's a business manager with a major in senior management. Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to our program. Thank you for joining us and welcoming our audience to your homes in Brazil and in Mexico. So please, Fabiana, you are going to start. Share your screen and the floor is yours. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Fabiana da Silva and I'm from Brazil. I would like to thank Badminton Panam for inviting me to be here and present about the Fast Track course. I'm going to share with you a little bit about my story and also about what happened, what I learned in this course. I started playing when I was 12 years old. I achieved, I have achieved a lot of things with badminton. I not only won tournaments, but I also got to study. I have a degree, a bachelor's degree in physical education, and now I'm, I am in the process of becoming a coach. And among the different achievements that I've had in my career, the one that I'm most proud of is that I became an Olympic athlete. I went to the Olympic Games uh, in Tokyo. I also won a bronze medal in the Pan American Games Lima 2019. But not only that, I also got to travel with athletes and friends and learn about the different cultures uh, from the different countries around the world. So those are things that I always bring with me. 
And it's a pleasure to be here sharing all of that with you. Uh, the knowledge of the course, well, here you can see that Martin is explaining the theoretical aspect in the court so we can then put it into practice. We have other athletes there such as Lino and Fatima. So we had theoretical and practical knowledge shared in this fast track course in a clear and an objective way in my opinion. And the most interesting thing was that first we uh, learned the theory and then put it into practice. We put into practice all the different uh, contents from the BWF manuals, which is very easy to put into practice. I really liked that because it's very clear and objective. The Development of the, the learning and teaching process. Here I am with Hob and Christina. Christina was explaining me the whole uh, process of a regime. I had to do this step by step in the court and I think that the development of all of this process was something that helped me a lot in the course to think about how I should coach the athletes and to focus on each learning stage, including the different objectives based on what I am trying to uh, teach my athletes in the court. The development of my professional career. Now I think that I'm applying a lot of the things that I acquired in the course. And something that I really liked was the tactical aspect that I learned. I think that Martin uh, taught and explained really well to me the different tactics that appear in the manual, which made me understand that you need to apply these exercises with the athletes. And all of that content that I learned in the course made me develop as a coach. So I think that today I can share this knowledge with other athletes, but also with other coaches who ask me for help in regards to tactics and technique. So that's helping me to grow as a professional. I also believe that everything that I'm learning is adding value and knowledge, not only in tournaments, but also in the courses. Every exchange of experiences with other coaches is helping me to grow and everything that I'm investing like in these courses, in order to grow as a professional is something that I know will add a lot to my career in, in, in the achievement of the goals that I have set for myself and in my future as a coach. I would like to thank Badminton Pan Am and the BWF for giving me the opportunity to take this fast track course and contribute to my development as a coach. I'm having a lot of opportunities 
my first experience was really good. I was able to go to England this year with two athletes from Brazil. And it was great. This was my first big competition. And to me, this was an unbelievable experience. And now we have Lino. Please, Lino. Can you please turn on your microphone and your camera? You can start with your presentation. Good afternoon. Welcome. Hello, hello everyone. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm going to share my presentation now. First of all, I would like to uh, say hello to everyone. My name is Lina Munoz and I am an athlete from Mexico. I am currently still playing I'm in that transition stage uh, from a high-performance athlete to a coach. And I'm going to very quickly tell you about what was my experience like with this fast-track course from Badminton Panam, which was held in Mexico a few months ago. This was an awakening to me in many ways. Actually... I, nev I had never thought that being a coach to change from being a player to a coach would be something new or a complicated transition. Uh, I'm not going to say complicated because at the end of the day, it's just about putting into practice new knowledge. So, okay, let me get started. This is just a short biography of what I've done As a player, I started playing badminton when I was eight years old in the city of Mexico. Actually, uh, badminton in Mexico is not a popular sport. I was fortunate enough that, uh, well, I'm, um, I'm, I belong to a sports uh, center. So there is a sports hall there and I was able to start playing there. I never thought about playing this as a professional But I, I just had uh, fun uh, hitting the shuttlecock and that's why I decided to stay because I liked it. So I started winning local competitions, international competitions until I decided to make these part of my life. And when I was 15 years old, I decided that I wanted to go to an Olympic Games, that I wanted to represent uh, Mexico, that I wanted to have uh, the longest uh, career uh, in, this, in, in this sport in Mexico. And that's how I started. Uh, talking about the course, well, I had heard about the fast track course. This course basically is at well adapts coach level one and level two in one week and this course is focused or on athletes or former athletes who are in that transition stage so you already know a lot about badminton in general you've already you've trained it since very young you have a basic knowledge of Uh, what the announcement's life is like. You know the, how, the training, the, working load, the workloads, the travels, and so on and so forth. But this course is not just about uh, teaching how to train, but this uh, breaks in little pieces, all the different components that you needed to become a coach. Because a coach is not just an instructor, it's also a mentor, is a, a father, a, a confident, a confidant. So it's a lot of things that you need to be in order to become a good coach. And obviously the planning stage is extremely important because you need to know how to administer or, or deliver the different uh, training loads for the athletes. So this course is very wide and it's very well structured and I think that we need a lot more time to actually get everything that uh, is included in the manuals but I think that uh, this course that involves uh, formers, uh, sorry, uh, athletes and former athletes and coaches oh, well actually this was a really good experience. Now why should you take this course? This is a super tool for players who are thinking about making that transition because it's difficult or actually we as players 
or me at a personal level. I think that since I was a, an athlete, I thought that I was going to be a good ath- a coach, that I had good the, all the skills to become a good coach because you've practiced that sport every single day. So you think that you can be a good uh, coach, but I think that when we make that transition, we realize that being a coach goes beyond just knowing what a training session is supposed to be like. A coach involves different parts of you that you have never experienced before. Like to, uh, You need to be responsible of a group of people, but not just in court, but also outside of it. As I said before, this is something that I think is different for each person. And this course is really good because it has a general approach but also specific approach on what's the life like as a coach. Now, benefits and development. Well, it's pretty much the same. The benefits of taking this course is that this gives you the foundation of what means to be a high-level coach from uh, planning and how to deal with different people, children, high-performance athletes, Uh, group management to deal with different types of conditions in places such as Europe or Asia where they have a different infrastructure and badminton culture might be a little bit easier but here in America it's a little bit more difficult because we might not always have the not ideal conditions but the necessary conditions to uh, train Many times we uh, don't have shuttlecocks or cords or we have a limited space. So this course gives you a lot of tools and different points of view in order to face different situations. So I think that that's one of the benefits that is extremely important to me. um, Oh, in my future plans. Well, right now I'm still playing and I think that I have been... Uh, stopped playing i haven't retired yet but i think that in a short period of period of time i will making i will be making that announcement okay let me continue i've already told you a little bit about my beginnings well badminton as i said before i really liked it uh, just because of the fact that it made me have fun uh, I, I had fun uh, hitting the shuttlecock, so I wasn't actually thinking about doing something specifically with this sport. It was just the idea of having fun as a kid, and uh, little by little, I started winning tournaments and competitions, and badminton has actually given me everything that I have. Thanks to badminton, I also have a, 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 I have high, a higher education, I have a master's degree, I won an Olympic medal, so it's one of the things that I'm really grateful uh, in life to have been in this path. In terms of the Olympic Games, I am a person who comes from Mexico and to play badminton in the Olympic Games is not nothing. It's I mean, the dream of every uh, athlete is to represent your country in the biggest competition, which is the Olympic Games. However, in Mexico, they didn't have a specific uh, roadmap towards the Olympic Games. We didn't have a, a, a leader, a mentor that could help us uh, to lead us to the Olympic Games. When I started this journey in order to get to the Olympic Games, well, this was based on trial and error. I had a lot of um, problems in the way because of uh, financial issues, workloads, and so on, because I think this happens a lot in Latin America. Many times players become the coaches, the delegates, the physiotherapists, physical therapists, and my case was the same. I learned about this a little by little, but thanks to the help of different coaches and institutions, I was able to uh, make my dream come true. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the description of the course. As I said before, this course is focused 
on players who are looking to become a coach so they already have a general view of badminton and the different components such as uh, the racket, uh, ranking points, uh, uh, training sessions, uh, workload. So you already have a notion of all of this. So the, this course gives you an, an idea to structure everything a little bit more. This course is quite intense because at the end you have to, at the end of the day, you have to re study two different manuals from the BWF. And there's a lot of content. The course is very intense. Uh, you have to be there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and you get you acquire a lot of information. You get a lot of information, and you have to put everything into practice. So it's quite challenging. Challenging because at the end, I think that to me that what was most difficult was to put into practice what I had learned as a player, but to include it in a training session. And it was not just about doing this exercise or that exercise. You had to think about the purpose, the tactical component, which was really difficult to me to include in the training sessions because when I used to train before, these training sessions were just like, I mean, we didn't actually think about it. We just, there, was a, there were a lot of repetitions. I was always exhausted. So there was no tactical component Another thing that is really important is that you see badminton through different eyes. It's not the same to see badminton as a player in comparison to as a coach. The var variables change a lot. The, the way of thinking is completely different. As a player, you you only think about yourself. You think about, okay, I need to eat right, to rest well, to watch your matches and so on and so forth. But as a coach, as a coach you need to think about a lot more things. You're in charge of a group and it's a lot more difficult because it's not just your emotions, but you also need to lead with a lot of uh, emotions from others. Uh, but also you need to think about the matches and the uh, coaching sessions because yeah, you may have your own coaching or training style, but players might have a different one. So as a coach, you need to find a way in which you can bring the, uh, all the potential of your athletes. Another important part was the methodology of the, of, of the training sessions. In this course, they teach you how you can plan one session, but also how you plan a roadmap to uh, the Olympic Games, for example, and that's very precise. And another thing that I mentioned was the management of different situations because as a coach, you need to know how to deal with this, with these problems or situations that arise and many times you don't know about how to do it. So this course gives you a lot of tools in order to deal with all of this. Well, why should you take this course? Because you would get a... BWF coach level one or level two certification. Obviously, this could help you uh, open uh, to open doors. In we could have job opportunities, new job opportunities, and, uh, because of course it doesn't. If you were a good athlete, that doesn't mean that you can be a good coach. So you need to prepare. You need to to educate yourself, and this course is a great tool. And of course, at the end, each one of us needs to investigate more in order to create your own coaching philosophy method, uh, method, methodology in order to teach what you know from a different point of view. I think that the manual it t teaches you a lot of things in order to be a good coach, but I think that the difference between being a good coach and a great coach also depends on that extra thing that you can add it to it from you as a person and what you have learned throughout the different years. Another thing that, another reason why I took this course was that I wanted to promote badminton in my country and why not uh, in Latin America eventually. I think that now that uh, badminton has grown a lot in Mexico and in Latin America and there are more and more people who's uh, really prepared to contribute with uh, first-hand knowledge to the next generations. Now, 
As I said before, some of the challenges that I had was that change of um, the way I thought to to change the way I used to think as a player and now to think as a coach. As a, as a player, I wasn't aware of all the things that a coach needs to go through, that emotional drain, more than physical drain that a coach has in order to uh, lead a, a team. I think that that uh, management of feelings is very demanding because obviously a coach needs to deal with all of this. And another thing that helped me a lot was to know how to plan a training session and divide my different my, my loads like to know what was a micro cycle a m m macro cycle the different stages of pre-competition during competition post-competition and also the tactical component was really difficult for me because I hadn't done it I didn't do it when I was a player and now to implement that for the people who I was coaching was difficult and group management well I already mentioned this in Latin America, we always face difficult situations and we not always have the best conditions. So I think that that always, that can make us perhaps better coaches because at the end of the day, we never have perfect conditions. We always need to innovate and think about new ways to coach or to try to get the most benefit of whatever we have with just the few thing, resources that we have and to improve them. And finally, uh, my future plans. I'm about to uh, finish my, uh, my I'm, I'm studying um, in order to get a master's degree in business and I would like to have my own business and I would like to promote badminton in Mexico. I think that a lot of kids especially in Mexico, that have a lot of potential, but that potential is lost because they don't have someone to guide them, someone who can tell them what's the next step to take. And that's one of the things that happened to me. At the end of the day, I lost a lot of years of, in my career where I, when I didn't know what was the next step that I needed to take. And I always liked or wanted someone who could uh, let me know what I needed uh, to do, where I needed to go, I could have saved a lot of time, someone who had uh, uh, been through that already. So I think that I would have had a great uh, result in my career. And I also want to keep uh, uh, receiving education and training because everything evolves. We cannot just stay with that same idea. Uh, just one way of thinking we need to keep uh, innovating keep asking in order to become better in order to be better and in the future i would like to take uh, the course in order to become a coach level three thank you okay well lena we have several questions and actually we invite our audience to make your questions in the chat any questions you may have about this course so among the different coaches that you've had throughout your career, do you remember what qualities uh, you saw in them that you would now like to have as a coach? One of the things that has, o has always characterized me is that I never had a specific coach. I worked with different uh, coaches, different in different countries with different uh, game philosophies. However, there was one. When I went to train in Malaysia, I had a coach from there who, at the end of the day, was a person who motivated me a lot, but he was, he was not a dictator, but he was... He knew when to be stricter with me and also when to be... Uh, more mild in his coaching style, but he was a coach who was very passionate above all in terms of what he wanted to uh, share with me. You could tell every day that he had a lot of energy when he got to the training session and um, that was very contagious. He was very prepared, he was very professional and he had a lot of energy and at the end of the day, I don't know where he got it from because he had three different groups, but that helped me a lot. That's something that I would like to copy. Excellent. And now that you mentioned that, we know that 
even though you have great, ha, you have a, you have had a great career uh, as an athlete and you've been training here in Panama, Europe, and Asia. Thinking about the different coaching styles, do have you noticed any differences in the different continents? Obviously, it's extremely different. The uh, training techniques are different in each continent from each uh, coach. I think that in Asia, well, things have changed. But I think that before, training in Asia was more, more focused on the physical aspect because, well, they have a lot more uh, players. So... Maybe if they have a hundred players, the one that who, who could take more repetitions would uh, stick and stay. So they train, they coach more uh, resistance, endurance, um, strength. I think that the difference in Europe is that they uh, work really well in the way in which they structure the, the game. They are really focused They're also very uh, personalized to according to the um, athlete because something is fundamental. Is like you cannot coach everyone in the exact same way because each one of us is different. You may have a, tra a, co uh, a training plan, but that won't necessarily work with everyone. So I think that that's why a coach needs to be uh, creative and that's why there are better or worse coaches because you need to manage those type of situations and the different athletes' personalities. You need to go from the general to the specific. And I think that uh, that's more useful for athletes because at the end of the day, each one of us have different physical uh, uh, conditions. So we, are, we have different personalities. And I think that all of that is uh, fundamental and a coach needs to know how to deal with that. Yes, that's very important, and well, that we could discuss that for a whole week, but yes, we need to, to adapt uh, the training sessions to the different personalities and objectives of each one of the athletes and help them to achieve their goals. Uh, so in this fast track course, I would like to know what was one of the most challenging aspects, according to you, What made you change your mentality from an athlete's point of view to a coach's point of view? And was it easy for you to make that change? Yes, actually, it was difficult because, as I said before, when you're a player, you don't notice all the different aspects that are part of being a coach. You were just focused on looking after yourself because as a player, that's what you do. You need to see what you need, how can you improve, what to eat, or when to rest, what uh, tournament to attend. But as a coach, you need to think about all the different efforts you have uh, uh, that you're in charge of, and you also take to take advantage of all of their um, skills, and uh, you need to try to make them to become better athletes, but also better people. And that's a completely different mentality. Once you put that coach hat on, you need to know how to manage everything from emotional conditions uh, to physical conditions. All of this environment that, uh, that you have, because I'm, I'm still a player. I haven't completely retired but I already realized that there are certain things that I need to do in order to become a coach and that has been quite difficult let's move on I have a couple more questions so let's move on do you think that in order to become a good badminton coach it is necessary to have been an elite player based on your experience with Martin and other colleagues? No, I don't. I, I think that uh, not every great player can be a great coach. I think that uh, there's no link or direct link between them. I think that a well-prepared coach who is in the badminton world and acquired uh, knowledge from different situations. I think that 
you don't have had to be a player. I mean, because at the end of the day, as badminton players, you're if, if players are a bit selfish because you are most concerned about yourself, all your actions, all your thoughts are about yourself, about how you want to do things. And when you're a coach, you think about a lot more things, not just about one single person. So I think there's no direct link. If you are a good player, it doesn't mean that you're going to be a good uh, coach. I'm convinced of that because I've, I, I had uh, coaches that were not good players. However, they were able to be great coaches. What you just said is quite true. Once you be come a coach full time the fact that you the experience of uh, training uh, kids and dealing with parents uh, so, solve uh, problems and go through the whole all that process you need to understand that you not only have one single player but several and they all depend on you on your uh, coaching skills and knowledge uh, that makes you think about all of this in a completely different way. I think that you are on track. Would you recommend these fast track course to some colleagues, uh, other players from your same level? Maybe, okay, they have, they already, they have already studied in the university, but maybe they also want to be a coach. Do you think that this would be a good tool? Yes, most definitely. I think that this course and anything else that can teach you uh, about sports, to, you need to learn about nutrition, physical preparation. All of these only complement complement what you know as a uh, as a player. These course was very surprising to me because it included a lot of things. I didn't think that this was going to be so specific that uh, included so many different topics. I didn't imagine that. I think that this course is, is I would really recommend that this uh, course because it changes the way you think in different situations. When you read the manual and all its contents, actually, if you've never seen, if you've never known about badminton, if you don't know anything about badminton and you just uh, read the manual in order to know how you can start playing badminton and coach it, well, that's one thing. And if you take the second, the coach level two course, obviously that's more a lot more specific. But I think that if you practice, you can master the skills. You actually need to be in the court. And as a player, yes, you have some advantage because... You started a training badminton and now you want to be badminton coach. You need to have some prior knowledge. For example, how we, the, the, the motions that you have during a, a competition. I mean, yes, you have a, a very long career, but I think that this course is quite good. And I am uh, really thankful that I had the opportunity to take it. Okay, I have very specific questions for you. So get ready. Can you tell me two very difficult contents that you found in this course? Well, the tactical component was something really difficult to me because I, we always had to develop a, a training session, but there had to be a progression. The training sessions were always divided you had to include an exercise, but there there had to be a progression and there had to be a tactical component. So, for example, you just it was not just about hitting the, the shuttlecock in a specific way and that's it. No, you needed to have a reason to do that. Why are you um, making that stroke in particular? And you had to make a decision in the court, oh, when would you, you use that um, stroke? And I liked that really m much. And I think that everyone in the course liked it as well, because when we were younger, studying badminton and studying tactics, I think that it wasn't that clear as it is now. I think the tactics now has a fundamental role. And I think that 
uh, before. Well, we used to make a lot of repetitions, which I also think that it's part of it. You have to repeat uh, a stroke many times in order to per, per, to perfect it. But to make decisions based on a specific game situation was not something that we grew up with. And that was one of the things that was quite difficult for us. Now, something else that I think that was difficult to me was uh, group, group management, so to speak, because I remember that Tony would say, oh, Tony, if you're watching, hello, I w wanted to, to thank him for his experience and wisdom. Here in Latin America, okay, let's say that you might have a session plan for eight kids, but what if one kid arrives late or because of, I don't know, a traffic jam or he got sick, he, he doesn't come. So then your session is has to be modified completely because instead of having eight, now you have uh, seven or five uh, athletes and you don't, you did exercises uh, that was planned, you had plan exercises for um, pairs, but now you don't have pairs because you have an uneven number. So what are you going to do uh, then? So you need to adapt a lot of things in order to uh, follow through the session. And that's, that was something that also took a lot for me because yes, you plan based on a perfect situation, but things may change. They can always change. So that, that was another thing that was very difficult among others, of course. Yes, that was a really good experience to try to teach uh, athletes to reflect on the on tactics and group management as well as difficult because, well, there are many coaches who have 15, 20 athletes and they are in different levels. So that's something that we need to practice and the course helps a lot with that. Okay, before we finish, with all all of this experience that you've had as a player and as a coach, can you please tell me what what's a badminton coach like for you? To me, a badminton coach is a mentor, an instructor, an advisor. all into one, all of these personalities, so to speak, into one. To me, a coach is not just a person who sets a training session, that's it. A, com a coach is more than a physical instructor or a mental coach. Uh, a coach becomes family. A coach becomes a person who you admire and respect. A coach becomes more than only that person is going to give you a training session. He uh, is concerned about you. He, he cares about you. He invests his time and energy so you can be a better player, so you can achieve those goals that you have set. So I don't think there's just one word to describe what a coach is. But to me, being a coach encompasses all of these different personalities into one. Okay, thank you, Lino, for joining us today. We have run out of time. We could keep talking about these all afternoon, but I know that you need to train and get ready. But would you like to leave a final message to the people who are watching this video? First of all, I would like to thank Badminton Panam for inviting me for the, the fast track course. Actually, I'm really thankful uh, for having the opportunity to take it. I would like to thank uh, all tutors, Martin, uh, Juan Pablo, Germán, for supporting me in my uh, sports career, not just with this course, they've always uh, been there. And in general, I would like to tell the whole community that badminton, the sport of badminton changes life changes lives, working hard, having a goal. It doesn't matter how hard it is. All your effort uh, has its rewards and 
life will reward you. I would love for people to keep playing sports and to practice badminton in particular. I am going to also contribute in order to make this sport grow so people in Mexico and Latin America know more about badminton. And, well, I just wanted to thank you for your time. I thank you for listening to me, and I'm here in case you have any doubts. Very good. Thank you, Lino, and thank you, Fabiana, who joined us today. Unfortunately, she had to leave, but we understand the situation. And, well, you are an icon. A lot of children look up to you because of your, uh, hum because how humble you are, because of your effort. So um, we wish you the best of luck in your, on behalf of Badminton Panam. We thank you for your participation in today's webinar and we hope to see you next time. So take care and see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.